Okay, but I don't want to block this. You, if you two folks would get in, you know, come on over here. Come over don't here. Don't worry, I'll, the drums, uh, Mayor, if you and your wife are in front of the drums, that'll work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, oh, smile. Your hands in front of the Jerome part. Oh, okay. Uh, like that. How's that? Good. That's great. Ha-ha. <laughs> I want it with me. Oh, you're going to get a kiss. <laughs> this is super. And uh, I knocked on 14,000 doors uh, to get elected. The elections are every two years. So I've already announced that I'm running again to be your state senator for 2022. Now you're going to ask me, well, what about the line? Yes, they will be redrawn. So if you're in my district or not, I'm still ministering to you as your uh, state senator and will, uh, you know, until 2022. And hopefully you'll be in my district again. Uh, there is a, a calling for uh, maybe perhaps to have a more high-tech ballot. You say to me, well, wait, we can vote without paper. Understand all that. But there is a move afoot to have a ballot. And if there is a new ballot, to have it be more high tech. You're going to see uh, really detailed writing and picture uh, images and numbers. And then there's a QR code at the top. If you apply your uh, phone lens to that QR code, you'll see a name and a serial number. In other words, with these high-tech ballots, each one is very specific and individual. So I'm going to pass that around just kind of for fun as a sample. That the, the bipartisan bills are nice, but there's a, there's a fight for the state legislature. And I think you deserve some special recognition for your role in this fight. And I really, honestly, we need to thank and recognize Wendy Rogers as part of the Jim Pro Caucus for well, pushing forth voter suppression bills that will make it harder for some people in Arizona to vote. It'll make it harder for people to stay on level. We need to increase and expand people's voting rights. We need to make sure that if there is voter ID, it's easily accessible so that everyone has an easy way to vote. There was no fraud proven in the last election. And you continue to push the big lie. This is wrong. And I have not heard you apologize for that. I think it's dangerous for our country. And as the son of the American Revolution, I am tired of politicians like yourself and Paul Gosar and Mark Fincham trampling on the rights of our citizens. May I yeah. respond? Yes, yeah. please. Thanks, I got your point. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I will do everything I can that the U.S. Constitution endows the state legislature with to ensure that elections are fair and that people have access. And I appreciate your input. Thanks for the question. Go ahead. In your opinion, or maybe you have facts, um, how many votes are fraudulent out of how many votes in the last election? And let's say in the last presidential election. I would election. never hazard a guess. Are? Uh, but you're, well, you must think there's some. You wouldn't be trying to I don't know if there are any. If you don't know there's any fraud, why are you worried about election fraud? We want to ensure that the election was fair because of all of the evidence that has been that's sent my, to that's us. That's my question. So in, based on the evidence, what's your opinion of how much, on a percentage basis, how much fraud there was? Let's say in the last election or maybe one I would years not ago. hazard a guess. Uh, we hope that none is wrong. We hope that everything uh, works out. But uh, there has been so, enough hue and a cry to reassure the voters. And so that's why but the audit's being conducted. So you're basing your push for more election security based on, I don't know if there's any fraud at all. Is that what you're saying? We shall see.
uh, with anything, you have to go in uh, completely with an open mind. So you're wasting the rate of money, the rate of money comes in from sales tax alone. We should see that share come back to us like we would in any other municipality, like Cottonwood or Clarkville. And we're not because revenue sharing is distributed back to towns based on per capita. So they, they take it from us with the 1.1 or whatever it is, big volumes of money that is spent in town. The state takes that, puts it in their coffers, and then gives it back to small towns. And, and that's not right. It kills us. I mean, we have to think outside the box. We come up with paid parking to try to do something. You know, everybody that squats about that. It's like, we have to support this giant tourism burden. We have a five-member police force. Tell me another town of 400 and some change that has five police officers in their town. You know, or a fire department, three paid officers. Or it, it's just not, it's, it's not the case. It's because we have a huge tourism burden. And that's a burden on all the residents. And I think the state should pay for it since they take a lot of the money from us. So. I hear you love the- Just pay it. That's, that's, that's the absolute word. And I think-